Not too long ago, Linus Sebastian of Linus Tech Tips mentioned that his last ever AMD graphics card was the HD 3870. And I'm officially switching to Team Red for the first time since the 3870. Well, I just so happen to be the proud owner of a boxed 3870. So let's take a look at just how bad, or perhaps just how good, this 15-year-old graphics card really was. Because, well, there must have been a reason why he went 15 years without an AMD graphics card, right? It really is almost like history's repeating itself. Nvidia's on top, free to milk us for all we're worth, whilst the scrappy old AMD underdog is trying to catch up in performance. If that sounds familiar to you now, well, the story wasn't actually all so different back in 2007, when the HD 3870 was released. Back then, Nvidia had the performance crown with the 8800 GTX, a card that I actually bought for the ultimate Windows Vista PC. So if you want to see that video, make sure you get subscribed because it should be pretty exciting. Unboxing the 3870 is nothing like a modern GPU unboxing. It's not as flashy and definitely not as heavy. And it certainly, certainly doesn't feel as premium. But one thing that these retro cards do have is this super cool artwork. Visually, all modern graphics cards are basically variations of the same boring grey and black design with a bit of RGB sprinkled in there and some LEDs thrown in over there. And that's about it. Back in 2007, you had bright red plastic, green shells, all these cool crazy artwork variations across all the different manufacturers. There was a reason to go for a design from a different company more than just, eh, it maybe looks a bit better or it's a little bit cheaper. No, there were some cool differences back then. And we should go back to that. I mean, maybe not the crappy anime artwork, but the variation at least. Come on, make it interesting. So look, I've got this uh, HD 3870. I'm trying to set it up. Um, and for the life of me, I cannot get any display on the monitor. I've tried everything from direct connections via DVI to wacky DVI to VGA to HDMI adapters and I've I can't try S video because I'm not a caveman, I haven't got an S video adapter. Even the Wish graphics card is outputting to the monitor at least. I don't, <laughs> I really don't know what else to try. I've tried a different motherboard. The, my best guess at this point is the graphics card's just dead. 15 years of sitting in the box has clearly not done it much good. <laughs> I don't know what to do at this point. Um, I'm gonna keep trying to debug it and see if I can get it working, but failing that, I guess we're just gonna have to cheekily borrow someone else's benchmarks because frankly I'm running out of ideas. So I guess the issue with writing, scripting and planning out a video before you've tested it actually works is that it might go wrong and in this case it certainly has because well I've got my hand on the heatsink of the GPU here and it feels cold to the touch right. There is no activity going on on this graphics card it is completely dead. The fan spins but that is about it, nothing else is going on. It's definitely completely dead. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be doing any of my own benchmarking today, but I think I might have a plan to save this video. Maybe. <laughs> so unfortunately, this thing is far too toast for me to be doing any benchmarking in this video. However, we can still answer the original question of why was this Linus's last AMD graphics card? Why didn't he go for the Nvidia 8800 GT, which was Nvidia's alternative, which was only very marginally more expensive and supposedly had better performance? Well, when you look back at reviews from the time, there actually turns out there isn't too much difference between what was going on back then and what's going on right now. Let's take a look at some comparisons between AMD's HD 3870 and Nvidia's 8800 GT, courtesy of Anantec. Across all the benchmarks, it seems that the 8800 GT has the clear performance edge. In game after game after game, the 8800 GT just edges out the 3870, with reliably steady and better performance compared to the 3870. So if the 8800 GT so consistently outperformed the HD 3870, why would Linus pick the 3870 as his graphics card? Surely the 8800 GT made more sense. Well, as I mentioned, the story now isn't too dissimilar to the story back then. The MSRP of the HD 3870 was about $30 less than the 8800 GT, even though you got reasonably similar, yet admittedly worse performance. 
And whilst you could pick up an 8800 GT, your options from official retailers were, well, let's say limited. The reason being shortages. Much like we're experiencing today, Nvidia just could not or would not produce enough of the 8800 GT to meet demand. And so retailers were often finding themselves being out of stock for months on end, leaving most gamers at the mercy of the second hand market and the now infamous scalpers. The idea of which was enough to put off many gamers of the time. Because even though the 8800 GT made more sense at MSRP, the only graphics card that was actually selling for MSRP was AMD's HD 3870, which obviously made AMD look like the much better value for money option. And well, that's always been Linus's take. He's doing it again now with the 4090. He's boycotting it, he's not buying it. He could easily afford it. He could buy tens, hundreds of them, but he chooses not to because, well, it represents bad value for the consumer. And so it makes more sense to go AMD. It made more sense to go AMD then, and it makes more sense to go AMD now. That being said, even though the HD 3870 made more sense back then, it doesn't mean it makes more sense now. See, AMD dropped driver support for the 3870 all the way back in 2013, which means there isn't any official drivers for the Windows releases past Windows 8. Not even the final beta driver included support for Windows 8.1, Nvidia, on the other hand, they supported the 8800 GT well into 2015, which means the most popular version of Windows today, Windows 10, still has official support for Nvidia's now ancient 8800 GT. Kind of crazy to think. But a lack of driver support isn't the end of the world for a graphics card. The Radeon 200 and Nvidia 900 series are proof of that. Both are still very competent budget gaming cards. However, it is definitely worth noting that the longer a card goes without driver support, the more games you can expect to experience random crashes if the games even load at all. But none of that actually explains why it's taken 15 long years of AMD graphics card releases for Linus to go out and buy another one for his personal rig. Let's take a look at some modern history. It's easy to boil all of this down to Nvidia just has better performance. And whilst for the most part that is true, very few things in life are that simple. Linus himself has admitted that one of the main reasons LTT and himself tend to lean towards Nvidia is due to historical issues with AMD drivers, something which even I have to admit as an owner of several AMD graphics cards across the last sort of decade or so. Well, luckily for AMD, all of that started to change in 2022, thanks to a complete rewrite of their DirectX 11 drivers, marking the beginning of the end for the stereotype that AMD has consistently bad graphics drivers. With fewer crashes, better stability, and an improvement in general performance, things are starting to look up for AMD. But poor quality drivers and software aren't the only thing historically separating AMD and Nvidia. Even if it was a major factor in Linus's choice to go Team Green for just so long. On the one show, Linus didn't have many good things to say about AMD's GPU division. AMD GPUs have just been like a meme. Yeah. For so long. Long time. Yeah. Really long time. And whilst he certainly is right, they haven't held the performance crown for a ridiculous amount of time now. They have still just about managed to offer a competitive price to performance that swayed me for the last at least five or six years. AMD have been playing a game of catch up for most of the last few decades with some really bad releases thrown in the mix or re-releases, should I say. But in the last couple of years, AMD has actually started to get back on track, potentially thanks to their increased profitability of their CPU division. And now with their chiplet style graphics cards following in the footsteps of Ryzen, slightly less unreasonable pricing compared to RTX 4000 and a better user experience through the improved drivers we talked about earlier, AMD seem more and more compelling each and every year. So that about explains it. AMD is on an upwards path at the moment, and a mix of Nvidia's bad decisions and AMD's not quite so terrible decisions is finally changing the tide for their fortunes. Hopefully one day soon we may actually see some true competition in the GPU space, because it's certainly not looking likely to be coming from Intel anytime soon. And so if you guys did find that video interesting, then do be sure to hit like and leave a subscribe. No, other way around. Hit subscribe and leave a like. That's the way I meant. Do that. I'll see you in the next video. Maybe for the Windows Vista PC? Nah, there's a couple of videos before that. But that will be coming eventually, so subscribe for that.